Let's welcome to Greg Conrad Families for Him Ministries on Thursday, March 28th. And they do call this Monday Thursday, the day before Good Friday. And I had, uh, had a few things I wanted to share with you. John, God's leading me to, to share with you on the scripture around that. I'm pulling this from, uh, from John, John chapter 13. But I wanted to, I'd like to do a little bit of research on it. You can see the, you'll see the, I found some information or, or like, definitions are always a good thing to have, right? So let's uh, let's get a define. Where, why do they call it Monday Thursday? All right. Well, Monday comes from the Latin word mandatum, which translates into command. And uh, and of course, Jesus, as you know, he commanded his disciples to go forth and share the good news, right, and spread the word. And that's what we're all called to do. And so Jesus gave that command, of course, and to love, to love one another. The greatest commandment that Jesus gave to all of us. So on Monday, Thursday, Jesus displayed his servanthood, right? He displayed, remember he told us, he said, to be first, you must be the servant to all. And he, uh, so he loved and he prophesied of his own death. And it was on the evening of Monday, Thursday, that Jesus also had gone up to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. You remember many times Jesus would go off on his own to pray. And this is, uh, and we see this, this pattern Throughout all of Jesus' ministry, it's real important to spend to spend time with God. So let's get right into John 13, chapter 13, which talks about the Passover, the Monday Thursday. Before Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. And he had loved his disciples during this ministry here on earth, and now he loves them to the very end. And it was as it was time for the supper, for the Passover supper. And the devil it had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father, God, had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and that Jesus would, of course, return to God. So he got up from the table, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. And then he began to wash the disciples' feet drying them with a towel that he had around him. And when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday, someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. This is pretty important here, right? God is saying really to Peter, says, look, you need to allow me to, to, to be the servant to you in order to receive all the blessings that are coming through. Simon Peter exclaimed, well, okay, great. Then wash my hands and my head as well. Lord, not just only my feet, but Jesus replied. He says, a person who is have, who have bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. Now, why? pause button. Why does he say except for the feet? Well, you remember sandals was, was the method of it. They didn't have the covered shoes like we do now. So, so as you walk into a, into a place, you always have to wash your feet. Very common thing. Uh, except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. And, of course, Jesus knew who would, would betray him. And that is what he meant when he said not all of you are clean. So after washing their feet, Jesus put his robe on again and sat down and asked Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. And I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Isn't that part of the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you want done to them. Bless others. If you want to receive blessings, bless others. If you want to get smacked around and cursed and, and be mean to others, uh, it's, you know, it's, there's, the world has different ways to describe that. Karma might be a term you hear a lot, right? But, uh, but, the, but the reality is you give love, you receive love. You bless, you will be blessed. These things, reaping and sowing is what it comes down to you. So Jesus gave that example. He says, I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one, the one, in this case Jesus, who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. And I'm not saying these things to all of you. 
I know the ones that I've chosen, but this fulfills the scripture that says the one who eats my food has turned against me, referring to, to Judas. He says, I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I truly am. I am the Messiah. And I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Why? Because Jesus said, he and the Father, they are one. Now, Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, oh, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. And the disciples looked at each other, wondering, what's up? What's up? What's, what's really going on? Of course, Jesus knew, but this, had, this is all to fulfill Scripture, right? The disciple Jesus loved, I hit the pause button there, because this is from John. John describes himself as the one that Jesus loved. He refers to himself, <laughs> he could have said me, but no, he liked to refer to himself in the third person. So when you see the disciple Jesus loved, that's saying John, the author of this book, the disciple John. Uh, was, he was sitting next to Jesus at the table, and Simon P- Peter motioned him, saying, hey, who's he talking about? So the disciples leaned over to Jesus and said, Lord, who is it? And Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give bread, and I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. And when Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him, and Jesus told him, hurry, and do what you're going to do. This is not a surprise to Jesus. But yet Jesus, all along, all the way up to this point, what was Jesus? He was treating him with love. And that's not to say that there wasn't anything happening cool up to that point, but Jesus knew from the start who was going to betray him. Um, you know, but, uh, but as you recall, he was the one, Simon, or Judas rather, was the, uh, the keeper of the money. And he was the thief. He put seat pockets and stuff for himself, and he was the one that was complaining about the perfume. Remember the perfume that was broken open and, and washed over Jesus' feet and wiped with the woman's hair? You remember these things. So Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And sadly, some of us will start off that way. Great, love Jesus, following Jesus, and then we'll turn because the enemy will go ahead and twist us. But bless God, his forgiveness and repentance is real, right? Hurry and do what you're going to do. And none of the others at the table had a clue what Jesus meant. You know, what, what, you know they, they didn't know what was going on. They, you know, they thought, okay, fine, because he was the keeper of the money. Maybe he said, okay, go out and buy something. Go out and get some more food. Go. They didn't know. They honestly did not know, as it says right here. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling them to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. And as soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will soon give that glory to the Son. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me but you can't come where I am going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love one another. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? These things that even from the very beginning that God had established, Jesus essentially has taken the summation of the Ten Commandments and bringing it down to love the Lord your God above all and love one another as I have loved you. For your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Think about that one. The way we treat others, that shows people, yes, I am following the way. The way, the truth, the life. That's Jesus Christ. I'm following these things. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come with you now, he asked. I'm ready to die for you. You know where this is going. Jesus answered, die for me? He says, I tell you the truth, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Now, some of the other gospels are a little more specific. Before the rooster crows twice or three times, you'll see that. But here, it's, it's done a little more generically. It's almost like, hey, even before the rooster crows the first time in the morning, long and long and short, Jesus had predicted, he prophesied. He said, Peter, you're going to deny me. So that finishes up chapter that chapter with it, Uh, but you know, Jesus chose to die for you. 
Jesus was beaten. Look at this, 1 Peter 2.24. It talks about by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Jesus took the pain that we deserve. Jesus became the sacrifice that God demanded because he's a just God. Jesus chose to become that sacrifice for each one of us to come to this. So as we're, as we're coming off of Thursday night here, moving into what we observe as Good Friday, the day that they hung our Lord on the cross to die, to take all the, every last bit, every last bit. That's the amount of love that God has for you. So no matter how down you're feeling right now, how messed up things may feel, know that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. Know that by his blood shed on the cross that you are loved beyond an incredible measure. Make that connection. Give it all to God. Lay it at the cross. Lay it at the feet of the cross. This is a time. This is a time to focus. Every day should be the time to focus with it. But the church calendar has a year, and a lot of churches tend to make this focus. And, and uh, you know, and a lot of the institutions of the world recognize this day. Now, some of you will go through, there are some religious folk will go through and say, oh, this is a pagan. Easter's a pagan holiday, working, worshiping the sun gods. And there's rabbits and all these things. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Moses in the Old Testament before Jesus would go in and conquer those, and he would set up altars at their places of worship. In other words, he was spitting in their face. He would take over their pagan holiday days in that and, and hijack them for the Lord. That's pretty much what he's, that's why you're seeing this on this day, you know. Don't get hung up on all these things, guys. Just stay focused. Get that relationship with Christ Jesus. Be focused. Grab it. Run with it. I want to I want to pray for a number of you because a number of you are dealing with a lot of things, be it emotional or physical. Um, you know, you see, uh, uh, I love some people try and say, oh, so-and-so's got the big C. Well, no, if they got the big C, they got Christ. It's a little C, cancer, okay? And cancer, of course, covers just a lot of different stuff, a lot of different diseases and a lot of things that flat simply are not of God. They are from the pit of hell, and they need to be cast back into the pit of hell. So let us focus on the good. Let us focus on the glory. Let us claim, First Peter 2.24, claim that healing that Jesus already bought for us. So for those of you who are are dealing with anything right now, especially anything physical, whether you be watching now or later, put your hand where that pain may be if you can. If not, just speak this after me. Say, this healing belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. I am a child of God. I am royalty because of what Jesus has done. Jesus declared on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness or disease in heaven. So we call heaven to earth right now in Jesus' name. This healing belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. So now you call out whatever that affliction or pain is, and you command it to go right now. So you have the authority. Jesus Christ gave you his authority over all darkness, and that darkness must bow. But it's got to be in the name of Yeshua Christ Jesus. Don't worry about specific stuff. Oh, I speak a different language. And then instead of that calling, you know, they call him uh, in, in the Hebrew, you know, he's Yeshua as he walked this earth. Oh, in English, he's called Jesus. Look, the devil knows when you're calling upon the name above all names, whether you're calling it in English or whatever language it is. God knows these things. And the devil knows it too. <laughs> so use it and command it. So I stand right now under the authority and the power in the glorious name of Yeshua Christ Jesus now commanding that all things, all spirits, all darkness, everything contrary to the word and to the will of God, it must leave you right now. Go right now. Get out and never return. You are not welcome. We cast you in back into the pit of hell. You are not allowed to mess with this child of God. For Jesus paid the price. For by the stripes of Jesus, of Yeshua Christ Jesus, the name of all names. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for freedom. So all pain must go. If you're, you receive relief, if things start to come back, just reclaim your healing. Go after it. All right? I was listening to a guy the other day who was talking about, talking about um, positive thoughts. You know, which is more important, to have more positive thoughts or less negative thoughts? Well, the reality is uh, <laughs> you can think, oh, I'm just going to overpower them more with them uh, by having more positive than they overpower the negative. No. The problem is about 85% of the thoughts that we have throughout the course of the day are driven to focus on negative. That's, there's just so much negativity around us. Don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the, oh, what are the, focus to the other side. How do I do that? It takes practice. 
It takes practice. You got to be conscious of it. And how are you conscious of it? You stay focused on Christ. You stay focused on the word. You stay focused on the goodness. What would Jesus do, right? That's a perfect thing. In this situation, what would Jesus do? Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to show the love. Now, when Jesus come back, he will judge the world. He will condemn the world. And he's coming back soon, folks. He's coming back soon. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. The Bible tells us and shows us all the signs. And as we get further and further and further and further through, through this insanity in this world, obviously we're getting closer and closer. Regardless, live each day as if tomorrow is your last day. You notice I didn't say as if today was your last day on earth. If today was your last day on earth, you'd just be giving everything away and you wouldn't have anything for tomorrow. <laughs> so, so live as if you know tomorrow is going to be your last day. Be ready. Be ready. Bless those who need to be blessed. Give to those who ask that you know have a, have, truly have a need. Yes, there's common sense, guys, but there's also this to go with God. You've got to be obedient to the call of God. Many, many times I've had God tell me, I need you to go ahead and bless that person you know, with money, with time, whatever. And sometimes I'm like, you're kidding me, God, right? You're kidding me. You've got to be obedient. Be obedient to the Word of God. Make sure you're listening to the Word of God. If you, something pops into your head, you're thinking, I'm being told to do this, if it doesn't line up with the word and will of God, which you can read in that Bible, if it doesn't line up, guys, that's not from God. Learn. That's it. And how else do you learn from God? You spend time with God every day, getting into his word. I've shared before many times, I use an app on my phone called YouVersion, Y-O-U version. Uh, you'll see it as the Bible. It's called the Bible. You'll see it like a brown and gold of a, of a Bible book as far as an app goes. Uh, there's reading plans in there. I really like the Robert Roberts reading plan. It was written in the late 1800s, and it has you read Old Testament Scripture, and then it'll have you read New Testament Scripture, where the Old Testament stuff was, was uh, affirmed, where, it was, where, it was, uh, uh, where, <laughs> where everything was proven, right? Everything was proven, wherever it can do that. God is a just God. God is a glorious God. God is a God of goodness and grace and mercy when we come to him. So come to Jesus and bless them. Make sure you just have just an amazing weekend here as you focus tomorrow. Focus tomorrow on what the gift that Jesus really gave for you and the, and, and the pain that he took for you, the gift that he's given you. And then, of course, through Saturday and Sunday, and make sure you, you get, uh, make sure you get, find a church. Find a church, get with people, and just have some rejoicing in the glory and gift that Jesus Christ has given you. You know, we know some people, that's all that's the only time they'll attend a church, Christmas and Easter, right? I think I heard them called the uh, CEOs, right? <laughs> Christmas, Easter only, right? So find, I don't care if you're a CEO or not. Let's get it there, but become from a CEO and become a regular, right? Get involved with people. There are people that, have, that share that vision you do, and you might not even know it. So reach out to people. When you're attending on Sunday, reach out, look around, find out what's going on, find ways that you get involved, follow what God is laying on your heart. I guarantee you when you're in that church, hanging out with other folks, it'll be a great and glorious thing. And it doesn't have to be in a church building. Just get together with like-minded people, people following the way, the truth, the life, following Jesus Christ. So make it an amazing weekend. I'll be back here on Sunday. Um, actually, we'll be here extra early. It'll be 8.30 for the the uh, sunrise, if you will. Of course, it rises a little early on that here in Cincinnati, but that's what the time we're going, which I'm thankful for. Thank you for 8.30. And then at the regular 10.30 time, the children will be here doing, uh, doing a play. So uh, we have lots of great things going on for this weekend. So make it an awesome and amazing rest of the week through the weekend. Remember, you are loved, you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, see you Sunday.